Can everybody hear me? Can everybody see my feet? Mm -hmm. Yes. How, how's everything for details? Is, can, is it all visible and you can see what this hand's doing, what this hand's doing, etc. Yep. Yeah. All good? Yeah. Cool. Um, right, so yeah, we might as well start. So um, to the beginning, almost everything we're going to do today is going to be a form of like a, a basic shoulder width stance or one foot forward, one foot back. But we're not going to be like sitting or like doing deep, um, anything too deep except for one particular exercise where we'll do a kind of equivalent to the squat. Um, if I'm going too fast or anything, just every whoever pipe up and, and um, ask me to, to slow down and such, and I will. Um, but to begin with, the first exercise we're going to do, we're just going to go straight into it, no um, warm up or anything. It's just going to be a neutral stance. I'm going to sit slightly into it so that I have a kind of crease along my waistline here, but I'm not going to bend my knees, stick my butt out, or kind of like lean back like this. I'm just going to keep a posture more or less completely straight and um, just kind of in a neutral stance. You can jump up and down to, to check your posture. If you land there without having to make any corrections in your knees, um, then you're more or less in your neutral stance. Another way to just double check is just to rock backwards and forwards um, and try to make the rock slightly smaller each time. So you oscillate backwards and forwards, you make the um, rock slighter each time and eventually it'll become so small that it'll be like imperceptible and you're more or less in your stance at that point. So you can just do that for a few minutes and if you ever feel like you've been like sticking your, your hips out too far or you're kind of uh, prepared over too much, just go back to that and uh, take a few seconds and, and work on that. But the first basic exercise we're going to do is going to involve keeping our hips, our knees and our toes straight forwards as if on train tracks in a line. But I'm going to turn my upper waist, which is my waist just dissected from my hip at roughly around the line of my rib cage. I'm going to turn this from one side to the other side, just rotating my shoulders essentially. So I don't turn from the hips. I don't like rotate here and here, and I don't twist my knees at all. I only turn the shoulders. If I want to, I can look in the direction I turn. I just have my arms hanging down by the side. Like this. Or I can keep my arms, keep my eyes facing forwards and just focus on one shoulder forwards, one shoulder backwards with as little rotation of the femur joints of my hips as possible. They're going to stay completely straightforward. Once I have this idea, I'm going to swing my arms so that each time the hand that swings up is going to be right on my center line. It doesn't go from either side like this. It comes up from the swing and points directly on my line. If I want to, I can actually, at the apex of the swing, touch a little bit, like as if I'm trying to um, ring a doorbell that's just outside of my reach. Now I kind of I extend just a little bit with my finger. So I swing from one side to the other side. I point towards the middle, and then I focus on keeping this rotation, feeling the heaviness of my arms and just letting them swing and turn from my shoulders and making sure my hips aren't like dragging with me. If I feel like my hips are moving in space, like at all, like even the tiniest bit, I want to focus more on fixing them still. One way to focus on fixing them still is to slightly grab the floor with your toes, like a suction cup. You slightly pull in with a little pinky and the large and the big toe and it will kind of suction cup your feet to the floor. It will feel a little tense to begin with but if you kind of rela relax and go again and keep trying to grab and then relax, grab and then relax, it will kind of come to a point where you can hold it without too much um, tension in your calves 
or your quads. Like this. Good. Keep going. And um, one of the main ideas now is while when we swing, we don't want our chest puffed out. If I tighten my t-shirt, you'll see that if I puff out my chest, I get this kind of exaggerated arch in my back. Even if I'm kind of sitting nicely in my stance, but my chest is still um, pushing out, I still have this kind of isolation of my upper back. So what I want to do is I want to put my finger on the middle of my chest, on my breastplate, and then I want to collapse it, push down in, in the direction of my fingers poking down. So it's a kind of 45 degrees downwards. It's very much like I have bad posture, like I'm a, bad, like I'm a teenager, you know, I'm walking down the street, I'm not really thinking about the world, whatever, not looking at where the bus is coming. I sort of hunch a little bit. This is a bit different from shoving his back, back here, but I collapse here. If I can do this, if you look at my um, back, it slightly rounds and pushes outwards. When I can do that, and I just have to play with that a little bit, I'm going to do the same rotation I was doing before, but I'm going to try to keep my back rounded, which means my back hand, the hand that goes back when the other one goes forwards, doesn't like pull back. It doesn't I keep this rounding and bad posture, essentially. Everything making sense so far? Mm -hmm. yep. Good. So we're just going to do this for a few minutes. Really think I keep this rounded posture. I keep my hips from moving as much as I can. And I just turn rather than like as a robot turning my arms. I try to turn my shoulders from one side to the other side. And then the momentum will throw my hands up to the middle. And then I can just point a little bit at the end. If I do this for a good five to 10 minutes, my arms are gonna really start to fill up with blood and get very like heavy and hot. I mean, it's already hot today, but um, it's gonna get even more hot. I'm really looking for that feeling Love of something. Go from novice to adept. Back to up to master. Keep going. Yeah, really focus, um, Dan especially, really focus on turning the shoulders. Yeah, much better, yeah. Put one shoulder on the line, the other shoulder goes on the line. Very much on your center line. Draw like a line from your nose outwards. And every time, your shoulder should almost be on that line. And the main thing here is to only raise, I only swing up to um, the top of my shoulder's height. Don't go like up here. I'm just going up to the top of my shoulder. Just the apex of my swing. And then I relax and just let this, my hands drop again to my sides. So each time, if I stop my motion, my hands should still kind of have that like little bit of inertia in them. If you find that when you experiment with this, try stopping the motion and do your hands like stop. 
straight away. If I was only turning from my center to throw my hands along the line, then when I stop turning the center, my hands should still have a little bit of kind of um, oscillation to them. Good. Now that I've kind of got this idea that I'm turning to throw my hands forwards and backwards, I'm going to instead do the end result, which is I'm going to take my hands and like a clock, I'm going to put them directly at 12, straight out in front of me, on my shoulders. Then I'm going to think this is zero degrees. This is 180, straight out either side of me. I want to instead be at 90 degrees, which is just in between those two. So I think zero is straight in front of me, 180 is flat out either side. I want to instead be at 45 degrees where I feel, uh, sorry, at 90 degrees, where I feel like there's this rounding in my back I'm not directly in front of me, I'm not directly to the side, I'm in the middle. This is gonna be the end point of both our hands. So that if I'm facing forwards like this, if I now turn my waist, one hand goes to the center line. If I turn back and I turn the other way, one hand also goes to the center line. So I can think that this is where I want to, where I want to end up. So what I do is I simply take my 45 degrees, I turn, so one hand is straight in front of me, and then I relax, I let my hands fall, and then at the bottom of the fall, I turn back and put them up again on the 45, uh, sorry, on the 90 degrees. Now I relax, put them back up, 90 degrees, like this. This is kind of introducing one of the first big basic concepts we're going to have, which is this idea that I let my hand fall. I have a posture, I'm kind of extending, pointing, reaching towards it, and then I'm going to relax, and it's just going to flop. Like literally, drop. You can honestly, you can always pick something up and literally let it go in front of you, watch that motion, and then mimic it. Half the time, in our, in our mind, we're going to see this drop, and instead of doing it, we're going to mimic that motion. We're gonna to try to draw the line with our hands. I really don't wanna do that. I really wanna go, let it fall. Every time, and in, and in the postures I show you from now, we're gonna work on this idea that we reach a point, and then we relax. And things will just fall, and if we've set them up correctly, things will fall on their own if that makes sense. So now we're gonna go back to the swinging exercise. But each time I'm gonna to go to the middle, I'm gonna think extend and then drop, extend, drop, extend, drop, extend, drop. And if I ever feel like my hands aren't twisting or my one hand is going further than the other one, or my back is moving and opening and closing in a weird way. I just go back to my, 40, uh, my 90 degrees. I know, I, go, I just go back to the straight, 180, 90, 10. This gives me my middle, my center line, and the ideal spot for my hand and fist to be at. If it's here, my back is too open, I don't really have as much power. And if it's here, it's too closed, the joint is too shut, I don't have my power. So I find that middle again, and I turn it until it's on the middle of my center line. And then I go, ah, oh, this is the right point. And then I can relax. And then I'm going to throw my hands.
Good. Are there any questions so far? I'm finding it hard not to bounce on my knees. Is that? Yeah. That's not a thing. Yeah, no. You want to stay still. No, yeah, no. It's, it, it's a normal thing to want to put more motion in the motion, should we say. Um, and that's why I really kind of describe these exercises like a, they're like a deconstruction. They're, they're things where you, you take pieces out and you really try to not have them in and then you isolate down to like just one motion. So we'll often feel like we want to like push, especially if we, if we do a lot of like boxing and kem, uh, like the Kempo striking where we come up on one heel and we use the torque to strike. If we're used to doing that, then we want to drive our, our arms forwards by like, by pushing up with our heels. Mm -hmm. And of course, afterwards you can do that. You can, of course, add in like explosion and dropping down on the spot. But if you want to work this turning of just, of just my rib cage from here, using kind of like my rhomboids, my spinal erectors, and all the sort of small bits and pieces here in my back, instead of my hips, if you just want to work this, the easiest way to, to isolate it is to really take everything south of here out of the equation, so to speak. So you can, in fact, you can even do this on like a stool. You can sit on a stool and once you're, once you're like braced against it, see if you can turn when your hands and your like your legs aren't supporting you anymore and see if I can still get this rotation and I can start the motion with my, um, just my back. It's quite hard afterwards. Um, you'll see that we always like to start motion from our feet and um, starting motion when we keep our, our kind of core out of the equation and we use our upper back to drive, it's quite, it's quite difficult later on. Well, it's quite difficult now. Um, the, and you'll see that if you try um, sort of putting a, a bar stool behind you and then perching on it and then trying to do this motion. Um, one, of the, one of the ways we're gonna uh, take the legs further out of the equation, which we're gonna do now, which we're a bit more of a leg exercise, is we're gonna put one foot directly in front of the other, essentially. If I turn on side, I'm going to trace a narrow line and I'm gonna put one foot slightly further forward and I'm going to keep my back heel pressed to the ground and I'm going to bend both legs a tiny bit. If I do this I should feel my balance go like almost all the time. That's totally normal. I'm going to like lean forward a little bit into my front leg and then I'm going to try to like I'm going to place my front leg on the floor and then I'm going to push it and push myself back up. So I'm not gonna lunge with my uh, knee, I'm gonna try to keep my knee kind of um, not as bent as 90 degrees, but in fact further out, like about, about this. Yeah. So first try to get into this position. Uh, you really want your legs completely in a line behind each other. Not like one out here, one here, but like one completely behind the other. You'll often find that like you try this and then the back leg will twist out and you have to consciously twist it back in. It's going to be very difficult. And honestly, it's, it's easiest to try to start this straight away. Try to do the same swinging exercise. Like this. How's everyone finding that? So hard. It is very hard. Um, this is where you really do need to keep your toes engaged. So grab with both your, with your little toes, really kind of stretch them out and then suction cut them and pull them in. And it will sort of cement you to the floor a little bit. You're gonna wobble like crazy on this one. Don't worry about that. The whole idea is now with my legs basically crossed, my hips can't be involved. They don't have the space to move. So I can only try to not fall over and turn my hips.
um, Iris, focus more, more on getting the turn smooth from side to side and using the momentum of this turn from one side to another to like slightly raise your arms and then like turn more to pick them up higher and then turn more to pick them up higher. So go from like low and then just try to throw your shoulders forwards a little bit more and throw your shoulders forwards again. So rather than, rather than sort of turn part of the way and then put your hand up on the line with no um, chest movements involved, I just try to throw it more next time, if that makes sense. So I just work a little bit from lower, making sure my motion is kind of smooth and my shoulders turn the entire time, forwards and backwards. And then I just try to turn it slightly more so that my hand goes slightly higher each time. Yeah, better, much better. Yeah. Focus on this kind of pull and push. Does everybody know those kind of drums where you roll, the, you twist the stick in the middle and the kind of the toggles at the end of the drum go back and forth mm -hmm. and sort of hit the sides? You're basically doing that with your arms. With twisting here and allowing the hands to kind of go forwards and then to stop them sort of flailing off, you just guide them with a tiny kind of point and extension along the line. Good. This is also good because by limiting your motion, it really teaches you sort of um, spatial awareness. You can't fidget because if my feet are fixed and locked in this position, as soon as I put my intention on like looking down at my feet or um, like wondering what to do, I'm going to wobble like crazy. I have to keep this kind of press and pointing forwards. And the more I kind of focus forwards and the more I push with both my feet and grab with my toes and then turn points, the more I will stay um, like fixed forwards because I look, as soon as I, uh, just like tightrope walkers, walkers, as soon as you look down at the ground, you're gone. You, know? you have to keep this kind of gaze in the direction you're going, if that makes sense. Keep doing that, I'll just check the time. How's everyone's legs feeling? <laughs> good? Feeling firm. It's a good workout for your IT band as well, which is something that rarely gets uh, a workout unless you're doing like balancing exercises. Uh, a variation that we won't do right now, but I'll just show you for the sake of it, is you can try lifting one leg and doing it. This is a lot harder because now your balance and your torque goes through your knee, but your knee still can't um, like wobble like this. It has to stay straight. So um, it's quite difficult. And I, I wouldn't recommend this from the get-go, but you can always try it and just see how well, how good your balance is, how high you can pick up your other knee, and how much you can still turn the upper waist and not have it like crunch your knee. But once again, don't recommend it from the start. You can really think of this as like the, um, uh, like an add-on to the twisting and talking you do with your hips. You know, when you're doing a yakazuki and you're talking with here, I can now also have a turn and pull and push and extension with my shoulders. So you just, by making this more clear in our minds, like what is turning, what is moving, what isn't moving, we can use it afterwards to like accelerate a tiny bit. Of course, if you just train it all together, it'll work. So certainly is no, it's not like necessary, but 
this can give me a little bit extra turn and can also give me um, the ability to turn my um, shoulders when my hips aren't involved. For instance, when uh, I'm, I'm seated or pressed against a wall or on the floor, I have an extra set of muscles to use when my legs are out of action, should we say. Good, how's everyone's arms feeling? Heavy? Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. So we've explored this concept of like turning and then relaxing and then turning and relaxing. This is kind of what we call forwards to backwards because we're basically throwing our hands forwards and pulling the, the other shoulder backwards. We're now gonna go on what we call up to down or raising and dropping. This will get this idea of stretching up and then letting go and falling. Very simply, once again, shoulder width stance. I'm going to lift my hands up. I'm gonna keep my palms parallel to the floor, which means I'm not gonna flex them like this. I'm gonna keep them flat, but I'm gonna stretch up as high as I can go without it going behind my ears. So we keep it in front of me. And then I'm going to simply, from here, let my arms go, relax. Then back up and relax. Up, relax. If we talk a little about, about the order in which we lift, what I want to do is I want to stretch my stomach first stretch my armpit next. So I really need to feel like my armpit can go up. Then I'm gonna push my elbow up and then I'm gonna push my hand up. And then the inverse is gonna happen when I drop. My stomach is gonna fall here. My armpit is gonna crush down. And then my hand is gonna finally drop. So I stretch up, 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 and then down, down, down. I don't need to bend too much with my knees. I'm not like squatting up and down here, but I can go from a little bit prepared from my neutral stance, to a little bit straighter, back to neutral. So I'm not going like, like this. I go up, back to neutral, up, back to neutral, up, back to neutral. And I really want to think of, I go to one point, I push my palms, the backs of my palms to the sky. And from here, I just let it go. And then on the upswing, I just go back to that point and then I let it go. So for instance, I'm not like pulling up to push down. I go one point, relax. One point, relax. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. The other big thing is if I turn on my side like this, when I lift up, I don't go back and my butt and my hips don't come out of alignment. If I can, I try to keep my kind of, if I demonstrate more like this, my back stays relatively rounded, not arched, and I don't like tilt my pelvis too much. I go from here, and when I lift up, my back is still more or less rounded. It's not arched. And then I relax. So once again, it's mostly the upper ribs and rib cage upwards that we're working on here. We're not worrying too much about the hips and the pelvis. We tend to say that if you try to tighten or correct the hip area, you, will, um, you don't know what you're looking for. There's so many like deep internal muscles, it's hard to pinpoint. So it's actually better to take care of the other two sides, essentially the upper body and then the legs, and then eventually the hip will kind of align itself. It's kind of difficult to like force it into posture. So you never really worry too much 
about what it's doing. You just try to let it be there, which means you don't try to push it forwards. You don't try to push it out. You just sink, relax, and use the other um, aspects of the, your torso and your legs to, to kind of guide it, if that makes sense. <laughs> Once I've been relaxing a bit, and I can get this idea of I come to a point and I let it drop, I can go a little faster, which means I'm going to focus on tightening now my lateral dorsi muscle, which means I pull my elbow down. And I don't know if the camera will pick this up, but I'll try and make it uh, more audible. But I'm going to go from relaxing to throwing. You should kind of hear your hand whistling and cutting the air. If this makes you way too tense, as it will, go back to going up and relaxing. But you can give it a shot from the get-go. It's always worth seeing, if I go up, can I accelerate down as fast as I want, uh, as I can? You know, really, just throw it down. You're not gonna break anything. Your hands are going either side. It's not gonna hurt. Um, at the most, you might um, feel a little bit of like um, pins and needles from throwing it so hard. But for the purpose of getting the form right, I really want to stretch up on a straight line and then relax on a straight line. Up, relax, up, relax. Any questions so far on this exercise? Nope, all good? All good. Good. Okay, we'll add in a little bit of footwork now. So what we did before is going up and down with our feet more or less cemented to the floor. Now, my feet, unlike in, uh, so a, a difference uh, to Kempo is, unlike in, our, in your footwork where you pick things back up and you move them forwards, we're gonna try an exercise where I move the centers of my feet at the same time in the same direction, which means I'm facing straight forwards now. When I do my raise, I'm in the middle, and then I'm going to turn both my feet in, once again, if we draw a little straight in front of us, out to the side of us, and then the kind of halfway point V in front of us, we're going to turn our hands, uh, turn our feet, both facing that direction on the spot. And then we're going to relax. But now that we relax, one foot is in front and one foot is behind. So we, before we were, in, we were in the middle, neither foot was in front. And then I turn and now I have a lead foot, the foot that's in front. This foot, the heel, my ankle is going to pick up. The heel of my foot is going to pick up and then it's going to drop as I drop. I'm not trying to like stamp my foot on the ground. I'm just lifting with my heel coming up and then I'm dropping and putting my heel back down on the floor. Does that make sense? So I'm in the center. I lift. I turn, I drop. Go back to the middle, lift, turn, drop. Of course, the progression of this is we're gonna to go to the other side. So we're going to lift in the center, turn, drop, lift back to the center, turn the other way, drop. Lift back to the center, turn, drop, lift to the center, turn, I smooth it out and go from one side to the other side. Mm. 
that all clear? Yeah. Obviously, I can't see feet for people, so you're just going to have to look at your own. <laughs> See how when I relax my hands just go behind me and I use that as to swing up for the momentum. Pick it up. One of the main concepts for this is it gives me this idea that I can lift my heel and then I can drop it in space to aid in coming down. There's a lot of, if you've ever seen a gorilla fight, um, you'll know that they, they have this big motion of arching their back, coming up and then using their weight to fall down. It's more or less the same idea here. You can think of it a bit as the, um, the force of uh, Uozuki, uh, sorry, Uoke, this kind of coming up and creating um, a sort of cross across your face. You know, if you're doing your raise, this really gives me um, the idea that my, like, uh, my chest is down, it's compressed, and it's going to straighten up and come up with force. So if I have my hands down by my side, I really round and then I stretch my ribs, my shoulder, my elbow in that order to pick them up like this. And then I relax. And if I go a little bit faster while turning, I'm going to go one side, down, down, down. Could you show what your feet are doing again? Sorry? Could you show what your feet are doing? Feet, sure. Uh, is that enough in shot? So I'm in the center. I both of you turn like this. Back to the center, like this. So they're kind of both pivoting on the same spot that they're on. They're not like turning or lifting and twisting and putting it back down. The feet stay flat and I twist them both as much as I can so they face forwards. It's a bit of an awkward um, sensation at the start. You kind of, we have a very uh, classic tendency to want to peel feet off the floor, and uh, we're going to fight that in um, concept here. So I'm going to drop, come up, heel lift, drop, come up, heel lift, drop, come up. This is almost the, the idea that you don't have time for footwork. Like you were doing something over here, someone comes to clobber you from behind, you don't have time to like turn, look, pull back. So instead you go literally from a box square from here to like a box square from here. But with your hands and your arms in front of you. Uh, in Tai Chi we call this the oh shit block because it's, it's the oh shit block. It's you know, it's, it's really, Protect and put your hands up. So I come up and I drop. Come up, drop. Come up, drop. Come up, drop. Yeah, good. You want to really feel like the longer your hands are away from you, the better. 
the more you would train instead of my biceps and triceps pushing up, the more I would train this opening of my armpit and this stretching of my rib cage. If you see me draw just the straight line from here, I can stretch just with my rib cage or I can stretch just with my armpit. The elbow is straight, so it's not at all involved, involved here. So I stretch my rib cage and my armpit and I just keep my hands parallel to each other, straight out in front, not doing anything funky. And then I relax. Up, here. I don't have to go super high either. I can do it to here if I want to. If it's, if it's killing me or it's sort of stretching something in my back I didn't previously feel and I don't like that, uh, you might like it. Um, I can just come to my eyebrow height. If you're thinking about um, application of this, this is really covering your guard. It's really someone's coming to hit you in the jaw. You just have to cover to there. You don't have to go higher. You can train it higher to train power, but for like application, it's literally coming up smoothly like this. If I just, if I don't worry about the footwork for a second, I just practice walking forwards, backwards, you know, even doing my Kempo footwork, you know, Sash Kayash, Sash Komiash, I just get this idea that my hands come up and relax, come up, relax. I change, I go a different direction. I do my little side turn, you know, here, and I just come up. I'm basically just training this. A very kind of natural smooth motion. My hands from down to up. Down to up. And is there a specific way that you're believing? Uh, not at the start, because if I try to force my breath in any particular direction, unless it's, unless it's like a kiai, uh, and it's an explosive outwards direction, then when I try to train this as a pattern, I'll kind of, I'll run out of breath and I'll try to compensate with the speed of my arms. It won't really work. I can, if I want to do the fast one, I can prepare, breathe in, and I can, as I go, and throw it like a ki uh, You could even ki uh, with it. It's the same idea where I, I've inhaled and I explosively, <laughs> Exhale, but I can only do that like once every 10. I shouldn't try to do it all the time because I just won't have a normal breathing pattern. So we say at the beginning, best thing to do is to train a single exercise smoothly for like five, 10 minutes. And then what will happen is if you really do this continuously and you don't like do one, you know, check your phone, do another, wonder about what you're gonna do, do another, you know, if you don't do that and you do literally one, two, three, without breaking the concentration. What will happen is your breath will settle into an inhale and lift and relax. Because when we relax, we tend to exhale. We don't tend to pull in as we relax. It's much more of a motion. So if I practice this concept where my uh, mind is really clear about what I'm doing, where I prepare to one point, and then I just relax and do nothing. And then I prepare to one point, and relax and do nothing. Then my breath will settle into that pattern if I do it for long enough. Um, you might feel a little bit of panic at the start if you put your attention on the breath as well. And that's just a normal kind of um, mind's reaction to you not to having it. its attention placed on the breath. It doesn't like it. So it just, it normally goes, ah, it's awful, but it's not, it's fine. So just think, to begin with, I don't care about breath. I care about the intention of the exercise, which is one point lifted and then relaxed. If I'm turning, I just put the point from um, 90 degrees into the other 90 degrees. 90 degrees, other 90 degrees. With a relax and relaxation in the middle. That makes sense? Yeah. So a long answer to a to a brief question. 
Um, that's good. Well, I'm conscious of time, Tom. So, um, does anyone else? Yeah, I'm doing. Uh, you're, you're at ten too. So, um, yeah. So, folks, do you have other questions for Tom? Any question, I'm sure you'll take them. Yeah. How did you 